That move's illegal. Hand me the rules, I'll show you. These aren't the... Ah, oh, never mind. Dear Tim and Moby, What does the Supreme Court do? From Ted. The Supreme Court is the highest court in the United States. It decides on legal cases that deal with federal laws, laws that affect the whole country and the Constitution. The Supreme Court decisions are made by nine judges or justices. There's one chief justice and eight associate justices. These justices are nominated by the president and approved by the Senate. When a justice is approved, he or she has the job for life. The court's most important power is judicial review or the right to declare laws unconstitutional. That means that a law passed by Congress and signed by the president can be struck down by the Supreme Court. Aww. Well, the Constitution is the ultimate law in the United States. So, if Congress passes a law that violates the Constitution in some way, the Supreme Court can declare that law against the law. Well, Congress wouldn't make unconstitutional laws on purpose. Interpreting the law can be complicated, and deciding whether a law is unconstitutional can be a matter of opinion. In fact, that's what Supreme Court decisions are called, opinions. No, not just any case goes to the Supreme Court. See, the court is the top authority of the federal government's judicial branch. It's the last stop for cases that have been appealed through the federal court system. When a case is decided, the losing side has the right to appeal the decision to a higher court. It's sort of like getting a second opinion from a doctor. A case can be appealed until it reaches the Supreme Court. But the Supreme Court doesn't accept every case it's presented with. In fact, it refuses to hear most cases. They get thousands of requests for hearings every year, so they have to choose the few that they think are the most important. Did you find those rules yet? See, it, it says right here you can't move twice in a row. You can't appeal it. They're rules. Oh, that's real mature. Just real quick, and I know that this is kind of boring for the uh, people online, but just sit tight for a second. I want everybody in class okay, to pull up their Unit 7 document. I want to see where we are at with that. Um, then, do is this. Zach, would you come up here for just a second, please? Don't worry, I'm not going to make you sing a song or anything. In front of it. <laughs> Here you go. Um, I wonder what the best way to do this is. Oh, in fact, you know what I could do? Here we go. Here. Give me just two seconds. That's what I'll do. I'll add you. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, I just want to check in real quick to see where you guys are at with this. Good. So the, you guys see the, uh, the portion of the document that has to do with the tiers? The tiers, T-I-E-R-S, not like not like one on tiers, but like tiers and tiering. And we're going to deal with that part on <clears throat> Thursday. So first part of class, you guys are coming on Thursday. We're going to actually address the different elements of the courts. Like, you know, so like 
<clears throat> for example, like if you had a gripe about your situation here in school or whatever it might be, you know, you wouldn't necessarily just jump right up to the Supreme Court. You know, there's obviously kind of this uh, uh, operation that you would have to follow, okay? You would have to follow a certain, these certain steps for that to happen. So um, here's what I want to do next here, folks. Looks like a lot of you have gotten a good start on the Unit 7 document. And in order for us to, uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, I want to give you ample time to work on this Unit 7 doc because this is the second to last day in which we're doing this, right? Because we're turning that one in this week. And I know a number of you that still need to get done with the Unit 6 document. I think I want to hammer out quickly this, uh, this upfront article that is pretty interesting. So... Let's do this, shall we? I'm going to take that and put that there. And we are going to watch this, actually. <clears throat> this is just a four-minute video that is relatively topical. This is happening in the news like now. This is happening right now. Okay. Now, the article that we're going to read from up front uh, is a little bit older. Okay. So, in fact, while you guys are watching this, would you do me a favor? Open up Schoology. And under the upfront articles portion, I think it's the last one I put in there. Yes. What's the title of it? Yes. Limits to free speech. And if you are like, Nah, I don't want the online variety. I have, uh, I have the tangible copies like right, uh, right behind there. Like, okay, um, and I can show you exactly where to find that. But in the meantime, I'm going to shut up and play this quick video. free speech case over whether schools can police students comments outside the classroom. This is a case that concerns Brandy Levy, who was 14 years old at the time of the instance that is in question here. Brandy was told that she couldn't move up to the varsity cheerleading squad from the JV squad at the end of her freshman year. And she posted a photo on Snapchat venting. There was a caption on there. It said F school, F softball, F cheer, F everything. And she was there with one of her fellow students flipping the camera off. This was a photo that was shared to about 250 of her followers, and it ended up reaching her cheerleading coaches. Someone showed it to one of them. They decided to suspend Brandy from cheerleading for a year, saying that she violated team rules. Well, Brandy's parents appealed to the school district, and when the decision stood, they reached out to the ACLU, who helped them sue the school district. Joining us now... Now is one of Brandy Levy's attorneys, Vic Volchek. He is the legal director of the ACLU of Pennsylvania. Uh, Vic, thank you so much for joining us. I know a lot of people are going to be watching this uh, case to see what this means for the free speech of students. Why was it so important to Brandy Levy's parents to sue over this decision? Yeah, thank you, Brianna, for, for having us. Um, you know, th while this is just uh, an expression of frustration that I think all of us can relate to, you know, punctuated with.
here we go. So those of you in the online world, okay, we can please open up that upfront article. Okay, the limits of student speech. The limits of student speech. Here we go. Randy Levy was having a bad day. It was a Saturday in the spring of 2017. Oh, excuse me. Now, what we do know about Saturdays, folks, is that typically you don't have what on Saturdays? School. So she wasn't Never. in school. Now, Never. this is pretty. It could, it could happen, right? Okay, but understand that she's probably not in school. Okay? In the spring of 2017, and the ninth grader at Mahoney Area Junior Senior High School in Pennsylvania had just learned that she failed to make the varsity cheerleading squad and would remain on JV. Levy wanted her frustration on social media, sending a Snapchat message to about 250 friends. Now, I'm not well versed in Snapchat, but I do know that for the most part on Snapchat is that unless somebody takes like a screenshot of it, is that it's kind of here and gone, right? Is that, is that my correct in that? But there are what? There's like workarounds you could find a way to record, right? Yeah. Okay. So I guess my point is, is that in her defense, was it meant to be published for anybody except those 250 friends? No. However, as you guys well know, in the electronic world, it seems as though no, nothing is temporary, right? Okay? It can all be recorded. The message included an image of herself and her friend with their middle fingers raised. Sorry, I don't mean to laugh at this, but good government. Uh, with, their, with their middle fingers raised, along with a text express, expressing a similar sentiment. Using a curse word four times, let me express her dissatisfaction with F school, softball, cheer, and everything. Those Snapchat messages are designed to disappear. Another student took a screenshot of this one and showed it to their mother, one of the, one of the cheerleading coaches. The school suspended Levy from cheerleading for a year, saying the punishment was needed to avoid chaos. Okay, so now let's take a look at the perspective of the school. We want to avoid chaos, okay, thinking that this is going to do some type of harm onto others, okay, and maintain a team-like environment, which is another interesting approach as well. I'm sure that there's a number of uh, you guys are largely involved in you know activities and stuff like that. Have your coaches brought up like? That we have a social media policy has that happened at all has it like you're not allowed to do x y or z no um I, i'm not banning anything but a lot of i've heard a lot of things like don't go spreading news about this team or that team on social media yeah don't spend proper game that basically <laughs> i just i just watched a, a video about you i know who nick saban is yes Mm -hmm. University of Alabama football coach, he does not allow his football team to say anything about his football team. It could, it could be as, as great as, you know, go Alabama, we're going to win today. Uh-uh, not allowed. Okay, so you want to talk about restricting speech, okay? Um, you know, some entities have made policies, okay? Some teams have made policies that their kids have to follow. Levy School the uh, School District winning a sweeping victory in the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit in Philadelphia. And forget, uh, you know, the story here. And maybe you guys don't find it interesting, but she was 14 when that happened. So to think that you can't have an impact upon this type of stuff is uh, is dead wrong. Okay? The appeals court said the First Amendment did not follow public schools to punish students for speech outside of school grounds. The school district appeal. I'm sorry for going on so many tangents here, folks. But that whole in school, out of school thing is kind of rubbing me the wrong way here. Because if you guys spent a whole lot of time in the classroom lately, I mean, think back to March, we were distance learning. Who's going to say what is and what is not school when we're distance learning? You know what I mean? So now we're, oh boy. Okay, now the Supreme Court has agreed to hear the case, Mahoney Area School District versus BL. It will be an opportunity for the nation's highest court to decide whether schools can punish students for off-campus speech. The case is an important one because school administrators, students, and parents have no idea just how far the arm of the school authority extends off-campus, says David Hudson, a First Amendment expert and law professor at Belmont University in Nashville. He adds, this is an issue that has been crying out for Supreme Court review for a long time. 
high stakes question. In urging the justices to hear the case, the school district said administrators around the nation need a definitive ruling from the Supreme Court on their power to discipline students for what they say away from school. The question presented recurs constantly and has become even more urgent as COVID-19 has forced schools to operate online. A brief of the school district says, only this court can resolve the threshold First Amendment question Okay. The devil in the nation's nearly 100,000 public schools. Why do they keep saying public schools? Why aren't they saying all schools? Because some schools are private. Yeah, and what, what is the other assumption that goes along with private schools? That they're not publicly owned. Private schools can operate their schools kind of how they want to. Now, I'm generalizing, but I don't know. Would you say that that's a true statement, Mr. Hooper? Ooh, I would agree with that. Yeah. I think you have uh, some sort of a tuition, too, where that says you're, you're, you're paying your dollar. You're buying in to what they're yeah. going to do and contractually. Hmm. They have the right. You know what I'm saying? Justin Driver, a law professor at Yale University, agrees that, this is, that the issues in this case are important. In fact, he says, it is difficult to exaggerate the stakes of the, this constitutional question. Driver himself doesn't believe that schools have the right to tell students what they can say when they're not in school. I keep bringing that up, when they're not in school. Okay. What you can say when you're here versus what you're outside versus when you're outside. In the modern era, a tremendous percentage of minor speech occurs off campus, but not but online, he says. Judicial de decisions that permit schools to regulate off campus speech that criticizes public schools are antithetical to the First Amendment. Such decisions empower schools to reach into any student's home and declare critical statements verbatim, something that should deeply alarm all Americans. The rise of social media. In the past half century, the Supreme Court has issued a number of important decisions about the students' right, First Amendment rights. The main precedent is from a different era. In 1969, in Tinker versus Des Moines Independent Community School District, the Supreme Court ruled that students had a right to wear black armbands to protest the Vietnam War, but said disruptive speech, at least on school grounds, could be punished by school officials making distinctions between the stu uh, what students say on campus and what and off was easier in 1969 before the rise of social media. These days, most courts have allowed public schools to discipline students for social media posts as long as they are linked to school activities and threaten to disrupt them. The Pennsylvania School Boards Association filed a brief, uh, brief in support of the school district's appeal to the Supreme Court. Whether a disruptive or harmful tweet is sent from the school cafeteria or after the student has crossed the street on her walk home, it has the same impact, says, uh, the brief says, adding that the appeals court ruling renders schools powerless whenever a hateful message is launched from off campus. Really kind of interesting. Levy, who was represented by a lawyers for the American Civil Liberties Union, remember them bringing up uh, already at the ACLU, okay? a group that defends constitutional rights, told the Supreme Court that the First Amendment protects for colorful expression of frustration made by an ethnico uh, Snapchat of her personal social media on that weekend off campus containing no threat or harassment or mention of her school and that did not cause or threaten any disruption of her school. The Supreme Court has a reputation for protecting First Amendment rights. Chief John uh, Roberts recently described himself as probably the most aggressive defender of the blue uh, excuse me of the first amendment uh, on the court now but the court has been slowly chipping away at students free speech uh rights since the tinker decision in 1969 such as with the 2007 ruling restricting some kinds of student speech off school grounds now i hate to go off on another tangent here okay and this is obviously a discussion that we could have on another day, okay? and I'm not really going to get fully into it for now, but a lot of school districts were really hesitant to make a policy pertaining to the Confederate flag because people were coming back with, it's their First Amendment right. You guys got me? That's why that took such a long, uh, long time. 
okay? And we can discuss the Confederate at great, uh, great length another time. And obviously our school has deemed it inappropriate for a school setting, okay, as many school districts have. Okay, but the reason that it took so long to do that was that first amendment, okay? Does that make sense, everybody? Do you have any questions about this? Pay attention to this. This is really going to come to a head really soon here. Okay? They're talking that might very well have a decision upon this within a matter of uh, this week or next week. Okay? Good? Very good. Then. Would everybody open, uh, open up, reopen up that Unit 7 document that we started out with before? Okay? I want to make sure that everybody got the slide that we were talking about bef uh, that we talked about last week. And I'm also going to cut the uh, online people off here. So give me just one moment here.